God provides So why do I worry about my life When he comes to my rescue a thousand times Every other voice it is a lie God provides God provides In ways I can't explain and can't deny The little that I have he multiplies Just when I feel he won't show up on time God provides He'll come through When the clouds of doubt rain down on you And test everything you thought you knew Now you finally see what God can do For you So tonight Close your eyes, there's no more need to fight Watch God provide God provides It's hard to say when there's no food to eat And what I see is all that life will be And will this be another year of misery For me my faith can't survive on just things I see And my feelings can't control my destiny See God, I only want what you believe for me So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight Watch God provide He will provide Before your eyes oh, He will, He will Close your eyes, there's no more need to fall So tonight, close your eyes, there's no more need to fight, ooh, watch God provide.
Cares are past, I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. Roam the streets of glory, let me live my voice. My cares are past, I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. Thank God again. Amen. I thank God again. Oh, I want to see him. Am I the only one that wants to see him? Am I the only one that wants to roam the streets of glory? Y'all off for quiet in here tonight, today. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. My cares are past, I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. My cares are past, I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. Amen, amen, amen. I'm not like, I'm not like our, our late father and singing all the words, but make me want to pull that hymnal out the book, out the bag, amen? Amen. I thank God for just allowing me another opportunity to stand before you this morning. You know, it's going to be a wonderful day. It's going to be a wonderful day when the Lord tells you to come get your reward. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful day. I take the good with the bad. The ugly, the pretty, the happy and the sad. I take it all because in the end, because in the end, when we get with Jesus, it's all going to be pretty. It's all going to be beautiful. It's all going to be wonderful. So we go through these things now that we face because it's better in us. Amen. We like the, uh, the sons of Levi. We're being purified right now. Amen. Going through some things. Uh, I know we all facing some challenges in our lives, facing some challenges even here in the church. But, you know, we have to be mindful of what the Lord is trying to do, what the Lord is trying to show us. God put some of this on us to challenge us, no doubt. Amen. He puts it on, but we don't have to be discouraged because God has made it so we always come out a winner. Amen. So if you know you a winner by walking with Jesus, we ought to give him a hand clap praise on today. If you know my situation is just temporal, 
we ought to give them a hand clap praise today. If you know my success is inevitable, then we ought to give them a hand clap praise today. And I didn't say believe. I said if you know. There's a difference. You can believe a lot of stuff, but if you know down in your heart, you can stand on the word of God and say, I count it as already done. I count it as complete. What's the next phase in my journey? Where I'm at now, I'm over it. I'm so over it right now. I'm ready for the next phase of my life because I'm ready to go out and tell men, look what the Lord brought me through. He brought me to this point. He ain't going to leave me now. I stand on your word, Jesus, on today. And I thank God for that. I thank you and praise it right now for everything that the Lord has done. Uh, we need to... Um, just to give, uh, I'm asking everyone, uh, and uh, if, if y'all don't know, I work for uh, General Motors, and our contract expired last night, so at any day, they could say, hey, we're going to go on strike to try to negotiate with the company, and they were talking about it all week at work, and I said, we ain't going on strike. I said, the Lord knows I can't be out in Buffalo on a Sunday morning walking with a picket sign when I need to be in Rochester in the word with his people. So I told him we ain't going on strike. So as of now, we're not on strike. But all of those who know prayer, just pray for that situation because the people, some people are, you know, they're so worried about it and they're so grounded. But I tell them I got favor. I got favor. And even if we do go on strike, I got favor that the Lord's going to take care of his. Amen. It's so wonderful. I never, I, I never gave it a lot of thought of what it meant to really be grounded in God's word. But I tell you, I sleep so much better knowing that I got God on my side. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night worrying about things. I do wake up in the middle of the night and think about the saints and pray for different situations. But as far as worrying if God's going to do anything about it, I have no doubt when the time comes, the Lord's going to make the changes necessary for change. Amen. But we do have to do our part. Do we understand that? We do know that we have to do our part. And with that, I want to bring your attention to the book of Genesis today in chapter 29 because there's a lot of work that we still need to do not only in this house but in the kingdom of God because if we give up now the devil is going to overtake amen so we have to be grounded in his word at all times there's no better book than the, than the Bible right now. There's no better reading than the Bible right now. So in, in Genesis chapter 29, call your attention to verse 18, 21, and then 25 through 29. And it reads as follows. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Jacob said unto Laban, give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, what is this thou hast done unto me? Did, did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her a week and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. I want to go back up to verse 20. I didn't read it but I want to go back up to verse 20 and it says and Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. It's I want to draw your attention to the first three words in that in that verse. And Jacob served. And Jacob served. And so with that, my subject would be you got to put in the work. You got to put in the work to get what you want from God. 
God has already promised us things, but he also wants to see us put in some work. Amen. He won't want us to, we're not supposed to be bumps on a log. You know, and when you look, we know this story, how Jacob, he was instructed by his mother to go into the land of her people. And so that way that they would marry, they would keep the bloodline intact. And so that was his first thing when he was running from his brother Esau. He went into the land being obedient to what he was taught. That brings me to the Great Commission in Matthew. When the Lord told him to go out, I'm paraphrasing, and spread this gospel and draw men unto Christ. Have you been doing that? We've been charged by the God that we serve to go out and put in some work. Amen. We have to put in some work to get something in return. Now, when we look at this story here, we look at um, at the end of the last Sunday school uh, year before we we started in this quarter, the last quarter, it was talking about covenants, all about the covenant, covenants between Ruth and her mother-in-law and covenants between God and his people. So Jacob entered a covenant with Laban. He said, I love Rachel so much that I'll serve you for seven years. Not for payment. I'm just going to work for seven years so that I may receive her hand in marriage. And he, and the, and the scripture says, and he served seven years for Rachel and they seemed unto him but a few days. See, because when you work in towards something that you really, really, really want, it doesn't matter how long it takes. You know, when you, because the confidence is in I'm going to achieve what I'm looking for. So when we serve and work for the Lord, because we already know that I'm going to achieve what I'm working for. Scripture says Jacob loved Rachel and he was willing to work for them seven years to hold her hand in marriage, to receive her hand in marriage. Are you willing to put in the same work for God? Are you willing to say, Lord, whatever it is you would have for me to do to help your kingdom to grow? Put it on me. I'm ready to go for it. Because we say all the time, oh, I love the Lord. Do you? Are you ready to roll up your sleeves? Are you ready to get down and dirty for Jesus? We got down and dirty for the things we wanted before we were saved so are you ready to get down and dirty for Jesus because the outcome is always going to be greater than anything that we could have achieved in the past it says but the work for the Lord is until we die until death we were just singing the song my cares are past. I'm home at last. I'm working towards the kingdom of God. Paul said, press towards the mark. So that's what we're doing. We're pressing towards the mark. But along the way, we saw in this, in this story that there was a setback because Laban went back on the covenant and he said use tradition in his favor and said I can't give you the younger before the older so you got to take her and then you fulfill her for a week and then I'll give you the other daughter but it's going to cost you another seven years of your life we go back to verse 18 where it says and Jacob loved Rachel do you love God can you love God the way that we that Jacob loved Rachel now the reason I chose this story is because I wanted us to look at it from some people might say all right you looking at it from a fleshly standpoint he wanted to satisfy his flesh but what I want you to understand is he had a desire for something no matter what it was he had a desire for it and he worked for it he worked towards it no matter what even in the set he couldn't let his setback when the when he went back on the covenant deter him from what he wanted what am I trying to say is we want things from the Lord you know but sometimes there's gonna be setbacks in our lives but can you still say oh no matter what I want this from God so I'm gonna continue to work for what it is that I, I I'm looking for if Jake if we love the Lord as much as Jacob loved of Rachel we would be in a better situation it's one thing to say I love the Lord do you I say all the time what love is what an action word 
put it into action. When God gives us instructions, we follow those instructions. Jacob set the terms of this. The Lord has already set the terms for us. But Jacob came out and said, I want her so much. I'll work for you for nothing for these seven years if you just give me her hand in marriage. Now, well, again, we might look at it like, yeah, he just wanted to satisfy his flesh. I'm not taking that from the story, though. I'm taking from the story is I have a focus and I have a goal that I'm trying to achieve. Do we all have a goal in Christ? Is there something we want to achieve in Christ? The answer should be yes, because I'm looking for everlasting life that no man on this earth can give me, that no amount of money in the bank can purchase for me, that no one's going to walk up and wave a magic wand and say, you're going to live forever. But we know through the word of God, if we serve God the way that he has instructed us to serve, serve him we shall receive everlasting life so I would ask you on today think back to when you first got saved it was a new feeling at least for me it was it was like something I had never felt before when the Holy Ghost overtook me and it was like a, something that I had never ever in my life failed before and that sparked the fire in my life where is your fire at today? Is your fire still burning for Jesus or has it dwindled down a little bit? Have we let things that come up, come up in our lives deter us from that same burning fire that we had before? You got to want it in your life. Do I want it bad enough that I'm going to serve no matter what happens? Even on the setbacks. I, it, it troubles me when I hear people say, well, I'm mad at God because he did this and he did that. God is the author and the finisher of all things. Don't we have to understand that all the things that go on in our life were predestined. But if they don't kill you, they strengthen you. If they don't take you out, if you don't succumb to them, because sometimes we just give up. And that's why I love that song, He's Able, because it says if you don't give up on God, he won't give up on you. But so many people get discouraged when things come their way. You know? But this is the time where you put the challenge on the Lord and say, Lord, you promised that you would never leave me nor forsake me. Well, I'm feeling forsaken right now. Are you going to be able to lift me up out of this situation that I am? It might look bleak right now, but I know if I live another day and the day after that and the day after that, you still going to be right there with me. But you got to put in the work. You got to put in your personal work and you got to put in your collective work together. The personal work as you're fasting and you're praying, being obedient to God's word, you know, seeking forgiveness from your brothers and your sisters, going and asking for forgiveness if you're the one in violation. You have to look at those things. That's all a part of do, putting in the work. And then there might be some physical labor. We might have to go out and knock on doors and tell men about this great salvation. People aren't coming to the church like they used to. People aren't coming in and saying what's going on in there anymore because the church has been thrown in so much turmoil over the years that people are hesitant to just walk through the door. So what we have to do is now we got to go out and become those fishers of men, as he said to the disciples. We have to be the ones to go out and say, let me tell you about this God I serve. Let me tell you about what happened to me on yesterday. And let me tell you what the Lord did to free me from this situation. We can't get saved and then just sit down and then come into the house on Sunday, Wednesdays, and every other Friday and be saying, we got to get this salvation in us. Then we got to go out and tell someone else what the Lord has done, what the Lord is still doing. So I ask again, where is your fire at? Is it still burning for Jesus? Do you still have that saying hunger to march, to press towards the mark as we did before? Listen, status quo is not going to work anymore things as usual is not going to work anymore. We have to find new ways to draw men into this salvation without compromising ourselves. Too many times people give in to the status quo and say, well, since they're doing it this way, we'll go ahead and do it that way. No. We have to be above all of that. We have to be different. The Bible tells us what? We're a peculiar people. We have to be different. When we walk in the room, we want people to see that we're different. Then you can go and you can ask God for whatever it is you want. Jacob had one focus. I want that daughter of yours. And I'm going to work however it may work. Laban 
switch the game on them. But he said, that wasn't going to stop me because I want what I want. So where's your want in Jesus? Where's your want in everlasting life? Where's your want for the kingdom of heaven? No matter what this, this world brings to you, can you step aside? Can you get over it? Can you just stand still until the Lord delivers you out? Because he's already promised you a way out. We're different from the world for a reason. That the Lord may continue to keep us. That the Lord may show. We, we become the display. You know, like the window display. We become the model for what God is doing in our lives. For what God can do for people. But you got to let your light shine. You can't, you can't have your ugliness re-coming re up again. We buried that when we got buried in Christ. So why am I still fighting? Why am I still fussing and cussing? That's not the work that the Lord told us to put on. That's not what the God told us to do. He said, Go out and tell men about this great salvation. If you want better, we got to do better. If you want different, we got to do things different. Status quo no longer works. We got we to gotta stop sitting down. We got to stop just staying in us. Well, that's the way they've been doing. No, it's time to do. That's why do you think over time things change? They can't stay the same. Let's look at technology. If technology didn't change, we'd still be listening to the radio for the news. But technology changed. That we as Christians have to grow. When the Lord changed us, he changed us for the better. So now you can have a positive effect on someone. It starts right in your own house though. I need someone in this house to be saved. The Lord chose you. Now I'll put my covering over this entire house because you in there and because you're one of mine. So we ought to be thankful for those things that the Lord has already done in our lives. But are you willing to put in the work? You know, I, I, I tell y'all all the time, I was unsure about this. I didn't see me standing before you and coming and lead, leading a church in any way, but I'm here now. I'm ready to put in the work, whatever the Lord has to do, because why? I communicate and I, commun I consult with God first. That's my new agent. I consult with the Lord. Lord, where do I go next? What is it that you want me to do next? And then he puts it. He gives it to me what I want. And then he puts people around me and say, well, you got to look at this and look at that. And I thank God for all of those. The input, the positive input. Now, I know there's murmuring and complaining out there as well. You hear the good with the bad. But I'm not going to let a setback hold me back. You know, to me, I look at a setback like this. If you set me back, no, you just giving me a chance to do it differently, to come at it from a different way. Whenever you pull something back, you reloading it and you resetting it to go just a little, little bit further. If I pull a slingshot halfway, it's only going to go halfway. But if I pull it all the way back and I let it go, it's going to go much further. So sometimes we all have to be set back in order to get back and go forward. And that's what Jacob was looking at here. Okay, Laban. And you got me. You tricked me for seven years. And then you sprung this on me. And now you want me after a week, you'll give her to me, but you want another seven years out of me. That's fine. Because I got what I wanted. And that's what I'm saying. When the Lord gave you the Holy Ghost, you got not what you want. You might not even wanted it because so, the day I got the Holy Ghost, I wasn't expecting it at all. So you might not have wanted it, but you've received it. And God gave you something different. Now I'm in a better position to go forward and face this world and face this, what they call it, this untoward generation. People that aren't saved, they don't know they're doomed. They have no idea what's coming. The Bible talks about Armageddon. They have no idea what you, what's in store for you. That's why when I hear people and they say, oh, I'm mad at God because he took this and he did that. He didn't let this happen. You better be careful. You better be careful when you're going up against God Almighty, the true and living God, because he's the one that says yea and nay, even over your life. So what am I trying to tell us? The Lord is telling us that we need to get busy. We need to get, don't matter your age. Let's get, no, I'm too old for that. You still living? You got a purpose for God. You got a purpose in God. If you still facing doubt we got to erase this doubt I can still do I'm breathing and I'm praising God I can do whatever it is I need whatever the Lord needs for me to do 
we have to take care of our father's business. Jacob was mindful of what he was taught. Go into the land of your people and choose a wife. He didn't go outside and do things differently. You know, he's part of that bloodline that was promised to be father of many nations. So he couldn't go differently. And he did it by being obedient to God's word. The Lord told the disciples what? Put down your nets and I'll make you fishers of men. And then he took them out and he taught them what, they, what he needed to teach them. And then he gave them the great commission. He said, now go and tell me. He didn't say go sit down and wait till I return. He said, now go and start telling men about this great salvation. And when he did show up on the day of Pentecost, when he did come into the house in the midst of the prayers, the whole atmosphere changed. And that's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to change the atmosphere in this house. I'm trying to make people look positive in where we're going. We don't have any answers that God wants us, that he needs for, to tell us up front, but we have to have faith. And believe that God don't make no mistakes. Man will dis disappoint us every single time. Guarantee it. I stand on it. That we will be disappointed by man. But we're quick to forgive somebody we quote unquote love. But then when things don't go right in your life, you want to say I'm mad at God. That don't sound right. Man turn his back on you, ignore your phone calls, act like he don't even see you. Or we coming down the street, cross the street just to keep from talking to you. But the Lord said, wherever you are, just get in a closet, get in your prayer closet and call on me. Whatever you need, just lay it at my feet and I'm be faithful to answer it because I don't want to fail the promises that I've made to the people. God made a covenant and he keeps his covenant. This is a great example of a covenant being broken by who? Another man. But the covenant that we into with Jesus Christ, if you be obedient to my word, if you follow after after the teachings that I give you, I'll be faithful to bless you. We blessed on a daily basis and we don't realize it. I heard sister say today in a review, I took a breath, it could have been my last breath. We don't know. The word that was floating around all day is uncertainty. But where's your faith during this time of uncertainty? Because a lot of times you just have to say, Lord, I don't know what's going on here, but you handle it. I put it at your feet. I put it on you to do something about this situation that I don't like or show it to me in a different way so that I can see things different. I might not be seeing what I think I'm seeing. And you can let the Lord open up your eyes to certain things, you know. But we got to understand when we put in a work for the Lord, He's faithful to bless us. He's faithful to keep us. And not for nothing, when you get blessed, things around you and people around you get blessed. Without even, they get that residual. The residual blessings. Your blessing is yours, but you got, you when you walk by, you got residu residual blessings on you. It's just like when you see what, how when an animal gets wet and the dog come in and he shake and the water go everywhere. Those, those residual blessings that's bringing off on other, because what he said, I'll fill your cup and it'll runneth over the what so you won't have room enough to receive it those are the kind of blessings that I'm looking for from the Lord I want the Lord to give me so much I said Lord no more I can't take anymore wouldn't that be wonderful to have and then what happens those residual blessings fall on someone else but we have to let this light in us shine out we have to let the light that we have shine forth and it's going to take some work it's going to take some sacrifice. In the scriptures, the Lord said, if, can you hate your mother, father, brother, sons, daughters, and not hate as we know it? Can you make them second in your life and make me first and foremost? Can you make me the first thought in the morning and the last thought in the evening and all of that in between stuff? I'll take care of for you. Can we stand on God's word? Do we believe the word of God? Do we believe the promises that God's made? Scripture says he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he was blessing and healing lands back then, why can't he bless and heal your land today? If he was blessing the sick, raising the dead, healing the lame, why can't he touch your sickness today and deliver you out of, a, out of your situation where you have doubt? The doctor says, no, it's not right. No, I don't know what else to do. 
you can look the doctor in and say, well, let me go find out what the Lord says. Because I have the confidence that the Lord can be the one that deliver, deliver, deliver me now. Even if he don't, I believe that my reward will still be greater than anything that this world can give me. Hallelujah. I admired, I admired Bishop when he said, I'm ready to go home. I'm ready. He was confident that I'm going to get my reward. God has the first and final say, but he confident. I think I did enough. I think I'm in good place. God will tell us yay or nay. But you got, that's the kind of confidence you have to have that yes, I've done all, I've put in the work for the Lord. I've put in what the Lord has instructed me to do. And when we go through this entire story here, and we know everything, seven years, and during that time, Laban was being blessed, Jacob was being blessed, so they outgrew one another. And Jacob said, it was time for me to leave. But Laban himself even said, you being here has blessed me. But I understand, I gotta let you go. You being here, what I had has quadrupled. But I understand I got to let you go. And Jacob was like, you keep all the goods. Because he had the confidence in God. You take all, you take all the good stuff. I'll take all the speckled. I'll take all the deformed animals. All the stuff that no man would want. And I'll take it with me. And when he left... God doubled it again. God gave him more. So you got to say, I, I can take this stuff that the world has given to me because when I get outside of it and I get into the word of God, God's going to take care of it and he's going to give me my peace. He's going to show me where I need to be, where I'm at, and continue to bless me. We can't let setbacks hold us back. You want to stay in the same spot? Go right ahead. There's no growth in that. Let's get rid of the familiar. And let's get into that uncomfortable place that the Lord calls you in. I'm not saying go off on your own be and be rogue. But I'm saying when the Lord starts to draw you away and set you aside, look out. Because he's getting ready to juice you. He's getting ready to make a great example out of you. He's getting ready to show, man, look what I do. This is what I do on a regular basis. I take the flaws. Every man that he used in the Bible had a flaw. Yes. I take the flaws and I put it to the good. I make the flaw flawless. Yes. Why do we think, why do you think we call it the rebirth? He's the only one that can wipe our slate clean. Wipe every sin that our body that we've done away and give us a fresh start like day one. But then when you get back into that, when you get that reset, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to go re-dirty the house? Are you going to go back and pick up the old habits? We say no, but then we find ourselves drifting back that way. But the God we serve gives us grace and mercy and gives us a way to return into his good graces. But you got to put in the work. You got to be ready to roll up your sleeves. You got to be ready to do the uncomfortable things that the Lord is telling you to go do. And we know when God is speaking to us Amen. we can act like we don't but God has a way of getting through to each and every one of us in his own way now what you do with what he tells you afterwards is totally on you gotta have faith scripture tells us in James 2 and 20 what faith without works is what so what faith do you have if you're not putting it to work? What faith do you have if you're not telling men, look what God did for me? What faith do you have if you ain't telling men, I know you can make it. And while you're going through this, I'm going to continue to pray for you that you get through it. Lord, strengthen them right now. Lord, help them right now. Heal their bodies right now. Move in their life right now, Lord God. Give them a touch to let them know that you're still with them. Touch them. Open up a door for them right now. All they need is just a little ray of sunshine and get through. Don't take when people come to you as ammunition to go talk about them. Don't use what they give. They've opened up to you. God put you in their life so that they can open up to you. So you can be like, I'll, I'll, let's pray. I'll pray for you right now. Don't turn around and go start talking about one another. That's not up to us. That's not our job. We're supposed to just get into the word of God. Give them the word of God. Encourage them in the word of God. Join them in prayer. That's what I'm talking about with unity. Get together. You going through something, well, I'm going to go through it with you. 
I'm going to be right there with you and see, and see you on the other side. I'm going to give you that push that you need, that lift that you need. The body of Christ. You're the area in the body of the Christ that's ill right now. So I'm going to pick up the difference until you can get back up on your own feet. But we got to get out of this status quo stuff. We got to be like, well, they always do it this way. This is the way they always know. We got to do things different now. Status quo is no longer working. Status quo work years past. We have to do things different now. If we stay still, we're going to get stagnant. We're going to be like standing water. Standing water attracts flies and mosquitoes. And mosquitoes bring what? Germs and diseases. Do we want to be diseased? We, the body of Christ should never be diseased in any way. That's why when the Lord came through, he touched and healed sickness. He didn't come, he didn't just come through and get sick and with with he touched the sickness. Get up and sin no more. Go tell men what I've done for you. In some cases, he told them, just be quiet. Let them marvel at what's happened to you. They got mad because he didn't make it in time when Lazarus passed away. This is how powerful the Lord is. He said, he's not dead. He just sleeping. God can look at death. If the God we serve can look at death and say, he ain't dead, he just sleeping. He was waiting for me to get to him. He was waiting for me to come through. And what did he say? He said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus strolled out like, what y'all doing out here? So what I'm trying to say is the situations that you face it, even though they look, look bleak, this God conquered death. Death is final. So your situation, it has not taken you out. Let it, use it as a point to encourage yourself. I'm going through this. I was talking to one of my coworkers, and they were talking about uh, someone that's in the ministry. I, I can't remember if they had a church or not, but they was in the ministry, and they said, oh, you know what? You just got to keep praying and encourage me. And the song came to me, sometimes you just got to encourage yourself. You just got to build yourself up. I can't wait till I get to the church for someone to pray with me. Lord, I need you now. I need you to come through now. David said, I almost slipped, but the Lord said, not today. I'm right here with you to stand you up and right your ship. Yes, you've had a setback in your life. Lord, I need you now. I can't wait till the doctor gives me that final test. Lord, I need you to go inside that doctor with favorable results before I even get there. I'm putting this on you. Sister Perry had me laughing when she said, I told the Lord, Lord, if you let, if you let me and my kids get kicked out, I'm going to tell the saints. The Lord don't want you to badmouth him. The Lord don't want you to, to go out and say, the Lord didn't do this and the Lord didn't do that. That's why when you think you're on the brink of failing, he's going to come through. Song says, I almost let go, but God kept me. God picked me up. God saved me from falling. So not give up now. So why wouldn't you? You know you've been to the edge before. You know you've been on the brink of discouragement. Man. You know you've been on the brink of giving up, but the Lord pulled you back from the edge. Now once he pulls you back from the edge, why wouldn't you go boots, do some work for him? He get gifts and callings for a reason. To grow this kingdom, not just to sit on it and get the well I got. Well, I can do this and I can do that and I got this and I'll make that. What have you done for God with that same gift that he's given you? How have you paid the man who gave you that gift back? He said, I don't want it back. I just want you to help my kingdom to grow. We got to roll up our sleeves saying we got to stop worrying about what people think about us, how people perceive us. Somebody say, well, she always want to be seen, always the first one up, always the one volunteer. So what? I'm putting in this work for the Lord because he told me to get busy. He didn't tell me to get some place and sit down. We're not supposed to be sitting on our Holy Ghost. We're supposed to be spreading this Holy Ghost around, sharing it with people. It was given to you. Why can't you give it away? The Lord is the only one can save him, but you can open up a man's ear to get him to think. What is this thing that she's talking about? What is this thing that he's saying? Let me see the salvation that you're talking about. I'm going to give it a test. I'm going to give it a trial run. People would we would we would have a lot less problems in our lives if we went to God first. But it's always seemed like the hopeless and the brokenness comes first. That's when you want to come to God when I'm hopeless and when I'm broke, broken. Don't wait till you get there. 
Don't wait till you get down and hopeless. And now you in that you in that gray area. Do I stay or do I go? Because the Lord is faithful to meet you at the door. I was waiting. What took you so long? Why did you have to go through so much? I've been here the whole time just waiting for you to turn to me. I've been here the whole time for you to just say, Lord, help me. It's a surrender thing. Just surrender your life unto the Lord. He say, well, ministers are always getting up there saying, God, you can do this and he can do this and he can do that. But they're not in my shoes. You're right. Brother Al quotes all the time. He'll put no more on you. What you're going through is for you. It's not for your neighbor. Because if it was your neighbor, they'd be right there in the same situation with you. What you got going on in your life is for you. Because when, I deli when the Lord delivers you out, there goes your testimony. There goes the proof that he's still healing. There goes the proof that he's still saving. There goes the proof that he's still opening doors for me. That he's still making a way out of no way. That he's showing men that look, he took my brokenness and he put it back together. If I smash a mug, it'll probably be impossible for me to put it back together the way that it was first formed. But if your life is in shambles and it's been smashed, God can put it back together like it never happened. God can put it back together to say, look, you have your shining like a, a brand new out the box toy. But when you put in the work, you can't let your setbacks hold you back. You get knocked down, you gonna stay down? Because if you stay down, you're gonna get trampled. But if you get knocked down, you pick yourself up and dust yourself off. That's a blessing from the Lord that he picked himself up and he dusted himself off. He didn't let this setback hold him back. He didn't hold it against God either. We saw it from one way. Jacob just loved Rachel that he was sprung, starstruck, in love. Said Leah was good on the eyes, but Rachel was beautiful. His main focus was for Rachel. All this in-between stuff didn't matter. So I ask you, if your main focus is on the Lord, why are we letting all this in-between stuff clutter our pathway instead of sweeping it to the side and keep on going instead of pushing it to the back and say you can stay back there in this mess but I'm removing myself from this situation I want us to understand there's something for each and every one of us to do in the kingdom of God we all have a purpose in God but you got to check and see where is my Holy Ghost operating at? Am I operating at full capacity or am I just hitting and missing? I have my good days and my bad days with my Holy Ghost. Because God was the same yesterday, today and forevermore. When he was going through and healing people, he was doing it on a daily basis. But he was teaching them about the word of God and giving them instructions on how to make it into heaven. Listen to what God is trying to tell you. Get outside of your feelings and how you f think, feel. You got an idea? You got an idea on something? Bring it out. It could be helpful. In the Sunday school lesson, they talked about the murmuring and the complaining. That's all they did. Forgot. He said, the teacher said, they forgot about the miracles that he did back in Egypt. They forgot about the Passover that even allowed them to come out of Egypt because the, because the blood was over the doorpost and they went on and the, and the death angel went right past them. Forgot about those things. Got out. Take us back. We at least if we die, we would die full. If I die, I want to die full of the Holy Ghost. I want to die. I want to die with my crown waiting on me. I want to be able to die and wait to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. All this other stuff in between doesn't matter. But I'm going to encourage myself to just keep going forward. I'm going to encourage myself to just put in the work. Proverbs 13 and 4 says, The soul of a sluggard desireth and has nothing, but the soul of a, of a diligent shall be made fat. Are you diligent in the word of God? Are you confident if I keep doing the things that the Lord has instructed me to do that I'm going to receive my reward? Or are you just going to sit back and wait to see what happened? 
Like someone looking for a job. Well, I'm looking for work. Well, what you do today? Well, I didn't do nothing. Job not going to stop by your house and pick you up. Job not going to call and say, I've been waiting for you to be home so I can come get you. You got to put in some effort. That's what I'm trying to tell us. We have to put in the effort to want to do things according to God's will. We have to put in the effort to seek the kingdom of heaven. God will come get you from wherever you are, but once he comes and gets you, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to just sit there and be hesitant? I used to dig my heels in a lot. I thank God for Mother Lacey, though, because she wouldn't let you. She pushed you. And, she, and in that push, she encouraged me. You know, it's not about putting someone in place because you don't want to do it. It's about encouraging someone to get involved in the church, get involved in the ministry, help this thing to grow, be a part of something great. Yes. Yes. Remember Cord caused disruption, dissension within Israel. The Lord said, those that are with Korah, you stand with Korah. Those that are with Moses, you stand with Moses, my chosen one. You either for me or you against me. There is no in between. God is not a fair weather God. He's in the middle of the storm as well as the sunshine. He's in the middle of the setbacks as well as the come ups. He's in the middle of the lows as well as the highs. So we got to get out of our feelings. We got to stop letting these feelings drive our service. We got to stop letting how you feeling at this moment dictate how you're going to treat one another dictate how you're going to respond to one to someone that comes at you come into church with your guns cocked and loaded because you if they come at me today this is how i'm gonna go god didn't tell us to do any of that he said i'll fight your battles vengeance is mine says the lord he said that's why you pray for those who despitefully use you because i'm gonna take care of them and i'm gonna in the midst of all that i'll remind them of what they did to one of my little ones do you want to be the one that's protected or do you want to be the one that's going to have that millstone tied around their neck? Question. You can answer it if you want to. Where do you stand in your work for Jesus? Where do you stand in helping God's kingdom to grow? I can't say it enough. We got to give. We got to learn how to forgive. We got to let bygones be bygones. We got to grow up and stop being childish. Well, I don't like this and I don't like that. What are you going to do about it? You know? Well, they ain't doing this over here and they ain't doing this thing. Right. Looking for volunteers. Hello? Looking for help. Everybody got an opinion, but when it's time to roll up your sleeves, now all of a sudden, my jacket too tight, I can't get my sleeves rolled up. That's going to be on you. I take what the Lord gives me and I give it to the people. Y'all know I've been pushing unity. We ain't there yet. We got to do much better. Now I'm pushing, putting in the work. You know, I'm just saying, I was, I was kind of disappointed in the teachers meeting when I asked for a volunteer. No one wanted to step up, but it's okay. It's okay. It might not have been for you, but maybe, maybe that's why you didn't raise your hand. But we got to, when God puts stuff out there, someone has to be willing to receive it and put it to work. God didn't just put it out there just for it to go. We, there's areas that need help and growth. We're not going to grow until we plant the right seeds in those areas. But it's okay. It's okay because I find my peace in knowing that I just got to keep doing what I'm doing. I'll keep going the way that I'm going. And I encourage people to get on board, get involved. Because when God starts moving and put the final pieces in place, you don't want to be left out. You don't want to be because you'll be one of those ones walking away sore and upset. You don't want to be the one out there still murmuring and complaining. We've been murmuring and complaining long enough. I'm trying to unify this house to get on one accord that we can walk like work like a well-oiled machine you know not constantly needing maintenance and being tuned up and fixed you know one go down the next man up 
simple as that. Knowing what, what our position is. We got to stop worrying about, again, what people think of. You always want to be seen. No, I'm just keeping busy in the kingdom of God. I'm trying to stay focused. Whatever it takes. If you got to join every auxiliary in this church to stay saved, then go right ahead. But I'm not saying that just to be joining up auxiliary. Expect to put in some work. Don't just say I'm a part of something. You got to put in the work. You got to make it available for people to see. Look, I'm, big, I'm getting busy in God's house. They say to me every week, how come you don't ever work Sunday? I, say, I got a Sunday job. I'm not worrying about the double time. If that was a problem, the Lord will take care of me. That's where I'm at. Am I? You don't ever work Sunday. I'm almost to the point, though, and I'm ready to tell them, don't worry about me on Sundays. But I just say, no, I got church on Sundays, you know, because my confidence and my faith is in the Lord that no matter what, and I'm a living witness how God has taken a little and made a lot out of it. There's been several times in my household that one of us was without work, one income, a household built on two incomes. Not once was my lights cut off. Hallelujah. Not once did we not have something to eat. Hallelujah. You don't think I'm going to come here and put in the work that the Lord has told me to put in? It's too late for me to turn back now. I told someone a long time ago, if I was the backslide, I know I would die. And I'm very fearful of that. I do everything in my power to do what the Lord tells me to do. It may not be satisfying and pleasing to everyone. But I remember that the Lord told me, uh, not the Lord, Bishop told me, you're going to have to make hard decisions. Everybody ain't going to be glad for the decisions that you make. He said, but if the Lord tells you to do something, you just go ahead and do it. Now, this is a man that I never, the only time I really heard Bishop talk was on Sundays. But when he got me by himself, he gave me a lot of information.